Hey, John Cristani here, marketing entrepreneur, tech entrepreneur, and I am a self-improvement junkie, and I just love learning how to get become a better person myself, which is why I attended one of this guy's seminars recently, and I'm gonna be going over the seven different lessons that I learned from attending a Tony Robbins seminar. So stay tuned. I'm gonna be going over the biggest stuff in this video, and hopefully you take something away from it as well. John Cristani here, and I wanted to see what all the hype was about, so I attended a Tony Robbins seminar recently, and it was very fascinating. In fact, I've attended a number of Tony Robbins seminars. I've probably spent close to 100 grand probably over the years attending Tony Robbins seminars between hotels and events and upsells and everything. And every time I've come away with stuff I've learned, I've even, I even volunteer. If you've been to a Tony Robbins seminar, let me know in the comments below if you've been or if you follow what Tony Robbins goes over. If you have no idea who I'm talking about, then let me know in the comments as well. Just say I have no clue who this is. But basically, Tony Robbins is a motivational speaker. He's probably the most popular motivational speaker of all time, and he really has taken a really big focus on figuring out what creates success and how to better yourself in order to create success. And just from being around his seminars and seeing the other people who attend his seminars, there is so there are so many successful people in the audience. It's unbelievable. I've never seen it before. How many successful entrepreneurs running six figure, seven figure, eight figure, nine figure, even 10 figure, which is billion dollar businesses are attending this man's seminars because he has the juice and his seminars are the best place to learn and I'm gonna go over the seven tips that I've learned from his seminars. So first off is trade expectation for appreciation. Now how many times do you go into a new business or a new relationship or even just you know waiting for you know in your relationships expecting something, expecting that I did this for you, I would expect you to do this for me or going into a new business and expecting immediate profits or expecting immediate results from whatever you're doing. If you have expectations Expectations. I've learned this in therapy, expectations are bad. Expectations are a downhill slope. It's a way for you to be discouraged because ultimately most of our expectations won't be met. And if you trade expectation for appreciation and happiness for what does happen, you'll take a much more positive outlook at life. You'll be a lot more ha satisfied because you won't be putting these nasty expectations around everything that'll ultimately leave you disappointed. Appreciate what you have, appreciate what you're doing, appreciate the people that you're working with, appreciate the job that you have, appreciate just being able to work or whatever it is and you'll be a lot more successful. Now lesson number two that I've learned from Tony Robbins is where focus goes, energy flows. And what he means by that is, let's say that you're focused on creating a new business but you're not focused on your relationship. Okay, if you're focused on a new business, your relationship's gonna suffer. If you're focused on your relationship too much, your business is gonna suffer. But if you're focused on three different businesses at once, they're all gonna fail, okay? That's the sad fact of things. We're not all Elon Musk right here. So I've seen far too many entrepreneurs fail because they put their focus into starting multiple businesses. And I've seen this within my own business. If I focus too much on my YouTube channel, other parts of my business suffer. If I focus too much on my marketing, then my customer support or my YouTube channel might suffer. So too much focus on a particular thing ha has hindered my business and I try to focus on my business overall rather than focusing on any particular piece of it at this point. So that's a really interesting thing to note because focus is a huge thing for me as a solopreneur. Now lesson number three that I learned from Tony Robbins is having a results focus versus an activity focus. Now I've talked about this a little bit in my channel, but one thing I do consistently is I measure myself. I have a spreadsheet and I measure all of my activity out. I measure how much time I spend on social media, how much time I spend getting you know, coffee from my kitchen. I spend, measure how much time I actually spend creating and posting ads and I look for what's gonna create results for me. Is it competitive research? Is it learning? Is it filming YouTube videos? Is it putting up ads? Is it 
talking with my affiliates and I've measured it and I have a good model now for what's gonna help me grow my business and for certainly I've figured out what doesn't help me grow my business and a lot I spent you know I used to spend a lot of time on social media now I know what drives revenue and I think a lot of people oftentimes mistake activity for actual creating results if you measure your activity each day down to the minute you'll see that a lot of the stuff you're doing is just it's just spinning wheels it's not actually going to create any money in your bank Bank account so look at those activities whether it's sales calls whether it's posting ads whether it's sending messages to people with links whether it's writing emails whatever is going to move the needle in your business okay whether you're an affiliate marketer like I teach on my channel or whether you are a salesperson or e-commerce business measure what creates results and focus on that and your business will do better as a result of that and give me an amen below if you know what I'm talking about if you know if you spend way too much time on activities versus results I used to I still do I still get into that funk so give me an amen below if you know what I'm talking about now let's go over lesson number four that I've learned from Tony Robbins is two millimeter changes make all the difference Okay, now when you're playing soccer, when you're playing football, two millimeters is the difference between getting a touchdown and landing on the one yard line. Two millimeters is the difference between zero and winning. Two millimeter changes in your life, okay? Figure out what are the two millimeter changes because oftentimes you can be almost there and all you need to do is change up you know in the case of marketing change up an ad or change up an attitude or change up an approach to prospecting or doing sales change up one little thing in your business if you're running an e-commerce store maybe change the angle of you know the product you're selling make it a little more specific audience whatever that two millimeter changes many of us are so close to being there we just got to find that little change to take us through. and I've seen this a lot of times in my business for instance I used to be selling a product uh, a, like a, a cheaper product an ebook online for $47 and I just couldn't get it profitable and the different and I'd spend I'd spend a couple hundred dollars a day trying to get this business working but suddenly I made one small change to my sales funnel and I instantly went from losing money from losing $200 each day to earning over ten thousand dollars each day because that little change in the marketing funnel was able to make it profitable and able to allow me to scale my advertising so that i was making a lot more money okay so oftentimes it's two millimeter changes that'll make all the difference especially if you're running an internet business the fifth biggest lesson that i learned from tony robbins was just about really self-control and about understanding that your physiology your health and your language affects your thoughts now if you walk around all day your physiology is your body posture if you walk around all day slumped down your shoulders hanging low and slouching and just really not moving much breathing shallow it's going to affect your thoughts if you're not getting a lot of oxygen if you're not moving if you're not active how you move your body affects how you think okay and if you want to see what I'm talking about just jump up and do some jumping jacks do a couple push-ups and you'll see that it changes very fast okay and your your thought your mind you can think better if you're moving around next thing is health okay if you're in poor health if you're eating just if you're just loading up on carbs if you're loading up on fries and Cheetos all the time it slows down your thoughts you get tired you go through those you know ups and downs that you go through with carbs now I recently got on the keto diet which is just basically fats and proteins mainly fats very little carbs and I've seen my energy instead of going through these spikes that you go through with ups and downs that you go through with carbs I've seen my energy levels really remain fairly consistent throughout the day and that has allowed me to focus a lot better I used to go through downs because I'd eat so many carbs and it just it would make me tired and I, I I wouldn't be able to do activities for very long whereas now just keeping it my diet to mainly fats and proteins I've been able to keep consistent energy fats fuel the brain they are actually brain food it's helped my focus and my thoughts a lot and this last thing is language okay if you're using language like oh I'm going to try to do that okay I'm going to try to start a business oh I'm failing okay I'm failing this isn't working okay then you're not going to be successful because if you're trying something how do you how do you try 
You know, let, let's, let's use an example. I'm going to try to lift this pen. Does it go anywhere? No, it doesn't go anywhere. Trying doesn't get you anywhere. Doing does. I'm going to lift this pen, okay? Words have a big effect on our brain, and the more we repeat the same words, the, you know, it, it'll either help or be a detriment to your thoughts. Which brings us to point number six, which is change your story, change your life. Now, if you've been going around saying, I'm from a poor family, I've had a lot of hard times, I'm really disadvantaged, I can't get anything to work. It's a cons The internet's a conspiracy. This whole entrepreneur thing is a conspiracy. All of these successful people I see on YouTube have have, you know, they had connections. They have something they're not telling us. And if you tell yourself that, if that's your story, it's gonna be true. Because you're allowing that seed of doubt to germinate. And by repeating it over and over and over again, you're creating a subconscious allergy to yourself becoming successful, seriously. You're telling yourself a story that you won't be successful and that you can't be successful. Whereas if you change your story and if you say, I can do it too, not just say it, but believe it, you can change your life. But if you allow yourself to be sucked into the conspiracy theory that's been spouted for thousands of years that being rich is all a matter of connections and certainly there are people who've gotten rich because of connections connections or the country they lived in or the family they grew up in. But if you allow that to be your reality where you say, oh, being rich is only a result of connections. You can only be rich if you know the right people, then you're never going to be successful. And you should quit now. Focus on your mindset and you will allow yourself, you will open up the possibility to success in your life. Number seven, which is one of my biggest ones, is success leaves clues. And if you want to learn how to be rich, if you want to become rich, look at other people who are rich or have become rich on their own. Success Success leaves clues. And if you watch interviews, which is what I do, I watch interviews like crazy. I don't need, I don't watch how-to videos. Many of the people on my channel, many of you viewing this, probably see me and follow me for my how-to videos. I show you step-by-step -step how to make money online. But that's not what I look for. I don't look step-by-step -step how to create a software company. I'm not watching videos step-by-step -step how to create a tech company. Step-by-step -step how to create a marketing flywheel. I'm trying to understand people's mindset. And I watch a lot of interviews. And if you watch interviews too, type in the comments below of a great interview that you saw recently. I've been watching Michael Siebel. I've been watching Jeff Bezos a lot recently. I've been watching Josh Alazeche. But I have a whole list of people I've been watching. But the point is, success leaves clues. Look to more successful people. The other side of this is non-success leaves clues. I don't know if any of you have seen, but there are a lot of channels out there. There's a number of channels. There's a number of videos about how you know, saying John Cristani, you know, saying bad things about me from people that aren't very successful. And you can choose to follow people who are doubters, who are hateful, who aren't successful themselves, or you can choose to follow people who are successful. It just depends on what you want. If you want controversy, listen to poor, negative, doubtful people. But if you want success, listen to people who already have it, okay? So think about who you're listening to. Are you listening to your broke family members who say being an entrepreneur is all BS? Are you listening to your unhappy, broke, corporate employee uncle that's saying, just follow the straight and narrow, go to college, get good grades, become a doctor, become a nurse, become a surgeon? Or are you listening to people who are in a state of success where they have millions of dollars, where they own property, they fly helicopters? Where do you want to be? Who do you want to listen to? Think about it because success leaves clues and you can follow those clues and become successful yourself. Now, if you enjoyed this video, write in huzzah in the comments below. I love Tony Robbins. As I said, I've been to a number of his stuff. I'm also going to link to Tony's channel in this, in this video somewhere. I don't know. It's going to be somewhere around here. If you want to follow Tony, I also encourage you to subscribe to my channel and click the notifications bell if you want to learn from me as well. I talk about marketing, 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 and how to start a business online working from your home every single day of the week. And it's my goal to be the number one marketing teacher in the world to help others have the same sort of success that I've been able to enjoy working from my family home here in Malibu, California. It's been amazing to be able to afford a nice life for my family and myself. And I encourage you to do it as well if you're so interested in starting an online business. Talk to you soon. And let me know in the comments what you think of this new format of video, which is sort of a first for me. Thanks.